Hey y'all, it's Crystal. Thanks for coming by today. It's that time of the week. We're gonna talk weekly reading update and talk about what I read this past week. Do -do -do. So it's Friday night. Uh, it's Friday evening. I'm, I'm glad the work week's over. We made it through the week. And yeah, weekend's right around the corner. So let's get, let's just jump right in because I got a lot to talk about because I listened to the hell out of some audiobooks this week. And I actually read some things with my eyeballs. I know. Who even am I? Let's get it going. Let's talk about what what I got into this past week. So I finished up April. I did read one more book in April. And that was Head Like a Hole by Andrew Van Way. This was the book club pick for Amy. Uh, Amy Noel Reese's Dark Hearts Book Club. Blah, blah, blah. And um, yeah, I really like this one. I feel like I read this like two months ago. But it was just a week ago. So let's try to remember what's going on. Um, it's, it was kind of definitely some strange elements, a little bit of weird stuff going on, um, interesting characters. Um, yeah, it was good. So let's chat a little bit. So it was it is a story that's set in the 90s. Um, the 90s kind of references and nostalgia was definitely cool. Um, I like that a lot. So our main character is this this sort of young girl. She's uh, been out, they, well, focus on kind of a group of kids that were once they were at a boarding school together and we, we pick up with them I think it's like two or three years after they've you know graduated high school and they've kind of moved on to different places right <clears throat> one's like in college and you know other guy yeah and um something is sort of like sort of lingering in the backs of their minds with particularly this one one girl sort of our main character who we're following who is an art student and she is remembering back in the past and when they were in high school you know, it was just a couple of years ago, but she was in a pretty horrendous car accident. And so she really has some actual memory loss to due to, you know, sort of traumatic brain injury. <clears throat> but like there's, you know, there's something kind of needling, you know, in her brain, right? And things kind of start happening. And um, it basically, we, we kind of go back and figure out what happened in the past, how it links to what's going on in the future. And then the, the little weirdness that slips in too regarding what brings all of this together and um without saying it's too much to spoil it of course i really liked this a lot i i didn't really know what to expect with it of course i hadn't read the author before um really enjoyed the writing i thought the characters were really well fleshed out um they were you know not sort of cookie cutter they were complex and interesting and um the story itself it just was very engaging it really pulled me in and I, I definitely wanted to see where this was going especially the weird bits um because the weird bits definitely got weird uh gave me some vibes of i don't even want to say vibes because i feel like that might be spoiled <laughs> so, but um but yeah secrets i always love when there's like some secret that comes out you know so there's definitely a good secret um yeah it was really good. There was definitely some good kind of violence parts of it. Um, good body horror imagery coming into play as well. And yeah, I I, just, I really liked this. I ended, yeah. Uh, so I know I did miss the book chat about this for the live discussion because I didn't quite finish it yet. It took me a while to finish this one. Not because of the book, just because last week I, or the week pr prior, uh, at the end, whatever, you know what I'm trying to say. I wasn't doing a lot of physical reading. I was just kind of burnt out on physical reading, I think. So it just it was, it took me about the whole week to read it. Um, but yeah, I really liked it. Really ended up liking it. So that's how I ended April. And I ended April with a bang, really. I, I read a lot of books in April. And I really enjoyed like the bulk of everything. So April ended really good for me. And honestly, May is off to been to, has been off to a amazing start. I've had a a really good time so far so of course uh you know we've got our read new readathons that have been kicking off zombie thon and uh, boogathon and escape the readathon those are kind of the three things that i've been focusing on this particular week and i've just been having a really good time so let's start may off i did finish what lives in the woods this is by lindsey curry i did listen to this one on audiobook this is the group pick for the bookathon, uh, the week-long readathon to read Spooky Middle Grade. And, um, and this was really fun and cute. <clears throat> Some definitely real spooky, uh, spooky elements too. I always like when Middle Grade actually really goes for the spookiness, you know? Um, yeah, and this one definitely did that. So this story, um, sort of a classic tale. It's, uh, you know, a family is, um, 
um, the father of the family is some, someone that does kind of like renovations and things like that. And so he's been called in to look at this old house in, uh, you know, this town and, um, I think in Michigan. I think it's like a small town in, was that Michigan? Anyway, uh, it doesn't matter. And um, so they, they, the family, it's summertime, so they've gone. They're going to spend a whole month in this house. And the dad's going to kind of, you know, work through, work with the people, see what it takes to, you know, kind of do some renovations, yada, 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 restore it to its sort of historical stuff, you know. And so that's kind of what brings them to the area. So there's a dad and um, dad and mom, of course. There's a kind of a teenage son who's you know maybe he's he's a teenager and then there's a younger girl who's a daughter who is the our main character and she was really fun she she um is totally loves Agatha Christie and she talks about Agatha Christie and her books all throughout the book and um so that kind of pulls in this mystery that we get about this house once they get there and she sort of does this like what would Agatha do moments you know as she's trying to kind of figure out what's going on so she gets there and this house has a history, you know, and, and a reputation in this little town of being, of course, totally haunted and um, something possibly in the woods as well. And um, and really the story goes from there and things start happening in the house and and we, we learn things, right? And um, and it was really good. Again, like I said, some really pretty creepy moments as far as, um, you know, kind of the, the, the events that start happening in the old house and and um, pretty creepy and uh, so I really liked that the um, I really liked the uh, there was a really good character development between the brother and the sister at first they were just kind of always button heads because they're siblings but by the end they're, they're kind of working together and um, I, know, I just really liked kind of seeing their relationship kind of, they kind of got a little close as you know, as the uh, events wore on and I thought that was really great uh, one you know sort of <laughs> criticism I would say about this is what, what's about the woods? Uh, the the <clears throat> the book is titled "What Lives in the Woods," and there's really nothing about the woods in here. It's really all about the house. There's some things mentioned about the woods and these things that live that possibly like sort of live in the woods, but that goes nowhere. <laughs> it goes absolutely nowhere in this story. It really is about what's in the house, and so I was left hanging a little bit with like. Well, what about the woods? <laughs> like, you're, you're telling me there's maybe something in the lives in the woods. What about the woods? I don't even know about the woods here. You know, <laughs> that that was the only thing I was just, I was left a little perplexed about. <laughs> um, what's going on in the woods? You know, other than that, though, <laughs> um, if you don't worry about what's going on in the woods, you're gonna be fine. To focus on the house, really good spooky elements, good character, and uh, good little mystery with some spooky elements. It was it was a fun time. I liked it. <clears throat> Excuse me, a little froggy in my throat. And then I kicked off Zombiethon with, with listening to an audiobook for Warm Bodies by Isaac Marion. And I really loved this. I really did. I didn't know fully what to expect from this. Like, I kind of knew the gist of it, but i never seen the movie or anything, so I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know about the book. I didn't really know. I thought it was like this little love story between the zombie and this, like, human girl, which it kind of is. But there's really a lot more that's going on in this story. It's pretty complex. It's super interesting. I really, really liked this. Um, it was pretty kind of a surprise for me. And um, yeah, so we get this perspective from a zombie. Yeah, it's from, he's a zombie. And, well, so the zombie apocalypse has happened. And um, I don't know how many years have gone by. It seems to be several years have gone by. And um, there's a little, you know, sort of enclave of zombies living at this, I think it's like an old, an old um, airport. Um, <clears throat> They are still falling into their zombie ways. Like every now and then they, well, we need to go eat. So they go, you know, <laughs> look for human flesh. And then there's a human, you know, sort of enclave uh, living kind of in the city and or at this old stadium, I think it was. And um, they're fighting off zombies, you know, classic zombie tale in that way. But one, you're getting the perspective of this zombie. So the zombies here, there's, there's a different, there's a level of sort of intellect still. And, um, and we kind of, I don't know, he, it's, it's just was really, it was just was super interesting how we get this perspective of this zombie about, and now he's sort of observing all the other zombies that are around him, um, you know, what they, what's going on, we see sort of through his eyes, it's super interesting. We also learn that once they eat someone else's brain, like a human's brain, they then like sort of get their memories and, um, and when he does this, he does make this connection to this human girl who, um, you know, basically an ex-boyfriend. And 
they fall in love and he there was an there was an evolution with this with this particular zombie who you know he's wanting to not be a zombie really anymore i mean who he knows he's a zombie but he doesn't want but you know he's more than just a zombie you know what i mean he's like i'm still i i can th I, I, th I can think i've got things going on in here you know <clears throat> And then we see some other zombies who are starting to kind of wake up in that way also. And then there's this sort of conflict, of course, between humans and zombies at the end of it all. It was really wonderful. <laughs> I just really loved this. I mean, it definitely has a little love story kind of going on between this zombie and this human, which maybe seems a little weird. But, um, but yeah, I just thought it was really, it was really good. I thought it was a you know, somewhat little you know, unique spin on a zombie tale. And it's definitely worth a read. And I know it's a series, so I think um, at some point I would like to continue. Um, I, I liked it a lot, really did. All right, I went, I carried on with some zombie reads after that, and I listened to Dead Haven by Flint Maxwell. Uh, I do have this on my Kindle, but I found it on Scribd, so I just listened to it there. Now, this one's a pretty stereotypical zombie story, as what you would think of a zombie story. Um, but, you know, it's pretty good for what it was, and if you're in the mood for a zombie story, I mean, this one was good. And <clears throat> so we're following this man. My classic favorite trope is when someone goes home again after <laughs> after being gone for a while. So it's got that going on to it. He's gone home right in the beginning of the book. His mother has passed away. And so he's gone home, you know, kind of take care of things. He doesn't want to be there because he was, you know, bullied a lot, you know, in high school and just, you know, kind of an outsider guy. And it was so funny, though, is that he is a writer and he writes zombie books. So, <laughs> so that was kind of interesting. And then, lo and behold, zombies come into this town. So, you know, small town, and I can't remember now, West Virginia, so I don't, you know, it's a small town. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And, um, and then, uh, yeah, stuff happens from there, and they try to get out of the town, and yada, yada, yada. It's very typical in that zombie way. There's a, you know, ragtag group of people that get together to try to get, get out of the town. There's conflict between some of the humans, because, of course, humans can never get along and just, like, try to save themselves from each other because they have to be assholes to each other. There's that going on in here. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, pretty, some good zombie stuff, some good zombie deaths. Yeah, in that way, it was pretty good. But, uh, again, pretty typical zombie story, but I don't, you know, I'm not saying that in a bad way. It was fun, and uh, definitely, if you're in the mood for zombies, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I think this might be a series too. I don't know that I'll continue. I don't know. But um but the first one it was enjoyable. Okay, then yeah, I read um this was I guess more for horror mayhem, which I yeah, there's horror mayhem going on too, remember? <laughs> and uh I also did use this for Escape the Readathon. I've used everything for Escape the Readathon, by the way. Um and yeah, so I'm from Team Vacationers. And uh so yeah, we can never leave this place by Eric LaRocca. This was great. This was amazing. Yeah, this was dark. Mm-hmm. A little bit strange. Kind of strange. Uh, and a little depressing. Yeah, a little depressing. You know when you finish a book and you just kind of look at it and just go, damn. Damn. Yeah, that's kind of what I feel about this book. Uh, it was good. Stunning cover, as most of uh, all of Eric Laraca's books have amazing covers, yeah. This one, gosh, okay, how do you even talk about it? One, it's really short, so I don't want to say too much. Uh, of course, gorgeous writing per Eric Rocca, like it's his MO. Uh, really sort of lush writing, um, with descriptions. Even when he's talking about really gross, disturbing things, <laughs> it's written really well and um, no different here. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and yeah. Um, we're following a sort of teenage girl as she is some, it's like an end of the world type of scenario. They're in this kind of apartment building that really seems to be falling into decay. There's like raw sewage on the floor and stuff. Like it is gross. And um, right at the beginning of the book, her father is dead. And so now she's teenage, she and her mom who don't have a great relationship, don't have a great relationship. And then um, uh, soon after the father dies, they get a knock on the door and some man, uh, and someone, you know, kind of weasels his way into, the, into their lives. And shit just goes from there. It is brutal dark at some times. Um, very strange. Almost fantastical. Ooh, um, mm, pretty tough imagery at some times. But again, absolutely fascinating at the same time. So yeah, I loved it. It's short. 
I ain't gonna say much else. It was really great. Um, yeah, I loved it. Really enjoyed it. All right, so another book for Zombiethon. Also, I used I used this book for Bookathon for a spooky middle grade, and this is um, Ever uh, excuse me, Ever After by Olivia Viewig. Um, this is a graphic novel, and this is was also was originally published in German. Uh, it was published again in English by the same author, so she translated it herself, and I, I really liked this too. Will say, um, I did see this on a list of like middle grade books. Um, I would recommend like if you are wanting to give this to a middle grader, I would make sure that they are <clears throat> on the. Excuse me, I've got <clears throat> such a frog in my throat. I would make sure they are on the older side of middle grade or even like young teenagers. Um, one is a zombie book, so there's like zombie violence, which some people might just, <laughs> you know, some kids just may not want to read that. There is also a just really content warning for a suicide attempt in here. So that's kind of a heavy topic. So not necessarily would put this in the hand of like a nine year old, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but I really liked this. I really loved the art style. It was almost kind of like cutesy with really like colorful colors, but then there's like these zombie scenes, you know? And, and the ideas here were pretty interesting about what was going on. Basically we have, we're in this little kind of town and or this, I would say town, but it's like a, a fortified, you know, zone, we'll say. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, uh, we have this, you know, this young girl who, um, we kind of learn a bit about her and, um, kind of her situation and what, you know, how people have survived, how they're still surviving, um, in, in this new world. And, and then somehow, by, by certain means, she and this other girl end up like outside, uh, you know, outside. And they are having to make their way possibly to like another kind of safe zone, you know, town, we'll call it towns for lack of a better word. And um, kind of what they see out there, again, some really good zombie imagery here. I'll maybe try to put in a panel here of <clears throat> what, um, what some of the zombies look like. And, um, and I just really liked it to be these, these sort of opposite kind of girls that kind of find this friendship, uh, you know, kind of pairing together to try to survive and make it through, that kind of thing. Uh, I really liked it. I really liked, um, I liked it. I it's a graphic novel, so, you know, it was a pretty quick read. I just got it from my library and um, I liked it a lot. Um, so check mark for Zombiethon and check mark for Bookathon because one of the prompts for Zombiethon is to read a graphic novel, so yay. I then finished, um, a Monster Street book, Karn Evil. This is by J.H. Reynolds. I used this for the bookathon prompt to read a, well, one of the prompts was to read a book set at like, you know, an amusement park or a carnival or a summer camp. But, and so absolutely perfect. This is set at Halloween time though, so you might want to save it for Halloween if you got it on your list. Uh, but it's a really fun, uh, just carnival story. So we have these two young brothers who are sent to live with their aunt for a week. Um, their parents have been going on like a trip together or something like that. Uh, and it was so, in what's so f really cool about this was their aunt lives uh, at like a sort of guest home at this, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I lost a nursing home. <laughs> I was like, that place for elderly people. Yeah, nursing home. And um, she takes care of the, of the patients, you know, the patients there, or helps to take care. And um, and so some of the, you know, the setting of the nursing home and some of the, you know, the people that are there come into play in the story, which I thought was really, really nice because um, they definitely, the kids have like similar preconceived notions about these old people at this, <laughs> this home, you know. I think by the end, especially the one kid, it's like, uh, maybe think a little differently, you know, about, about you know sort of you know old people right and um so this halloween sh or, uh, halloween carnival comes to town they go and um ooh, it's a little more than they bargained for and uh, they run into this guy right here and um and yeah things happen uh, there's something that you can do to get unlimited rides at this carnival and uh, it's pretty sinister kind of spooky and um yeah it <laughs> Pretty so star when you think about it. But it actually it does play you know, into the sort of aging and things like that too, which kind of ties back into the nursing home. Um, and really, you know, of course, about these two kids who, you know, 
learned through like if they just stick together then then they won't get themselves into sticky situations <laughs> things like that uh, stop don't just think about yourself like the younger kid and um, you know, have a little bit of responsibility and towards with each other and toward each other um, I just had a really fun time with this this was really excellent really a lot of fun and uh, I can't wait to read the rest of my monster street books now because I finally read one <laughs> and and it's just a fun cover uh, just so just so fun I can't I can't recommend it enough so well, tons of fun and just today I finished the audiobook for We Sold Our Souls by Grady Hendrix. Uh, this one I am using for the uh, Spring Me and Melody event hosted by Gareth from Bookstones and Other Magic. And um, I really like this too. Again, I had a great week. Uh, so this is about, well, our main character is a sort of kind of middle-aged uh, woman who used to be with a band and, uh, but, um, but you know, the band didn't really make it with her and uh, so she's like working at a hotel and just you know not living her best rock and roll life <laughs> uh, but there's one guy in the group Terry who kind of sold them all out back in the day and he has gone on to fame and fortune and um, we learn uh, why that was basically and along with you know our main character as she is trying to kind of get a little revenge not revenge necessarily but just kind of you know what the hell terry i wanted i wanted i was supposed to be we were supposed to do, do this together as a band and and all get you know successful and you know live the rock and roll right and uh, so i really like this um I, I i'm a grady fan i'm a grady hendrix fan uh so uh, you know I, I really i just like this this was a lot of fun i really liked the characters on this like i i really love a lot of most of his characters and no different here. I had a great time with these characters here. And um, again, some really good kind of horror moments with some gross bits. He's really good at writing kind of gross bits and scary bits. There was this one scene with, I don't I don't want to spoil it, but I was just like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was pretty, that was, that was good, you know. Um, and yeah, I don't know. That, I mean, that's it. It was just it was really good. Rock and roll. Lots of references to, you know, other like metal bands and rock and roll bands and, and stuff like that. It's, it was really great. Really had a good time with that. So that's how I've ended up the week. And um, I'm, I'm super excited. I had a really good week. So uh, for Zombie Thigh, and we're watching zombie stuff too. Uh, so I did, well, finally, I started watching Kingdom. Now, my sister told me to watch this when it first came out because she went and hadn't watched it. And um, I said, okay, I'll watch it. And, like three years later, I hadn't watched it. I think it came out in 2020. Uh, this is a South Korean show, so it is on Netflix. And so you can watch it there. Um, I've now watched the first three episodes. I am hooked. I love this. Why haven't I watched it before now? I hate when I do this to myself. Uh, this is fantastic so far. It's got, it's a historical piece, first of all. So uh, all the costumes, it's historical, you know, Korean uh, um, clothing and, and ha the hat, the hat wear is on point. And um, there, we are, there's a king and he is, um, well, we learned about what's going on with the king. And, um, but there's also some, you know, because there's a king and heirs and like the heir is getting a little sticky of who's gonna be the heir because he's like got this new this new lady who's pregnant and then he also has like a son who's like an adult um so he's like the prince but this lady's about to have a baby too you know how that gets with political intrigue and sort of uh especially with you know uh succession and everything so there's a lot of political play which was kind of wrapped in family drama uh really enjoying that and um and then you got some zombies thrown in to what's going on. I love it. The zombies here are super duper, just, well, when they're frightening, um, they've got the, the makeup is just like, you know. Uh, but they also, they have this like, almost like hibernate during the day. And so they like f crawl themselves like underneath the buildings and stuff to get away from the sun. And they just look like, oh, like catatonic during the daytime. It's, it's really, it's kind of, it's kind of spooky and bizarre. Um, I'm loving it, yeah. So I cannot wait to watch some more episodes. I'm excited. I think there's there are two seasons now. I think of Kingdom, so I'd like for if this month I can maybe look at do the first season. I think it would be great. Uh, and also we did a watch party on the Zombiethon uh, Discord for what was it? Scout's Guide to Zombies, and this was so much fun. I had so much fun with this. I had never seen this one. It was very 
funny, you know, kind of tongue in cheek with zombie stuff, um, a bit crass and crude, um, you know, because we're following this, these three teenage guys. And so, yeah, things get a little crass at times, but they are Boy Scouts. And lo and behold, this little town, some a zombie breakout happens, and you know the story goes from there, and you know maybe some of their uh, Boy Scout tricks come into play, and it's just it's really funny. It was just I had a really fun time with it. So, highly recommend it if you're in for a more lighthearted kind of <laughs> zombie movie with some really just over the top sort of zombie kills and uh, things like that. So there's a bit with a trampoline, which is hilarious. <laughs> and um, yeah, so had a really fun time with that. And I think that's I think I've watched anything else zombie-ish. So yeah, I'm having a fun time with Zombie Thon so far. I'm having a really fun time. Um, so that's it. Yeah, that's been my week. I've had a really fun week as far as my entertainment goes. <laughs> um, like I said, I'm filming this on a Friday evening. We were headed out of town tomorrow. I'm so excited. Um, yeah, so I'm done. I'm excited. And looking forward to it. Hope you had a great week. So let me know what you've been reading, what you've been watching, what you've been listening to. You know, all that good stuff. And, um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again for stopping by. You know, I appreciate your time. It means a lot. And, yeah, catch you next one, friends. Bye.